project comes with a very cool tool, which is geolocation. I can locate this geometry in the world um, by going to Window, Model Info, Geolocation, Add Location, and then a dialog box will come up, which is, is a will search for the location in um, Berkeley. I was just looking at Villa Savoie, that's why that's my last one. Uh, but I'm going to just type in Worcester Hall, Berkeley, California, and there it is. So it uses Google Maps as a um, search engine. And I'm going to click Select Region and Grab. And what I want to grab here is the immediate context. So whatever shading is going to influence the computer lab. And I don't need to include things that are behind it, behind the building, in my case, because I'm just worried about the computer lab and nothing else here. So I'm going to extend this a little further, uh, but make sure I include things that will impact it. I'm going to click Grab, and it will automatically import it into the model. And you can see here, it actually does it with north following the y-axis. So uh, you can see that this is just slightly off of north. And what I like to do at this point is to make sure that I know where north is and where the y-axis is and set up what's called a project north so that I can uh, make a new axis. The way to do this is to set up a scene that is that axis. So I'm going to click, um, I'm going to unclick these check marks here, and all I want to do is keep the axis location. Press plus, and I'm going to name this true north. And um, then I'm going to make a, um, a new one and call it project north. And this project north, I'll come back to reassign it in a second. I want to align with the uh, uh, with with the actual Worcester Hall. So I'm going to draw on here. I'm going to trace. I'm going to go up to camera, parallel projection, camera, top view. And what I want to do is trace as best I can the line that is that face. And I want to also do what's perpendicular to it, which I can do by uh, starting anywhere sort of in the middle and then, um, oh, you know what, this might be, no, why is it not snapping here? I'm going to press L for line and then, there we go. So if it, it should show that magenta color or pink color and that will be perpendicular to the edge. So now I can make a new axis that um, looks like that. To do that, click on this axes and starting in the middle go over to the right and then to the top and now I've got a new axis um, and I want to update this project north so I click on this update scene and so if I click on true north it switches to my true north axis and if I click on project north it switches to my project north axis and what I want to do is align my sketch or my open studio geometry with my new Project North axis. So to rotate the um, zone to the proper axis, I can uh, take these um, axes and group, group them. I'm going to press Shift and then right-click, make group, and then move them to the corner of the zone. And then I want to select all of my Energy Plus objects and then deselect that um, that uh, guideline, and then move the uh, zone, or move the energy plus uh, objects by rotating. So I'm going to click there, and then click my reference, and then snap to that axis guideline. And now everything should line up correctly. So now I can just move my zone to align with this corner, and I've located it in uh, space. I'm on the second floor, so I'm actually going to I'm going to move it up 
uh, 16 feet and now it is located in space correctly relative to the corner. And now I need to locate the different obstructions around the site. I've got a large tree here, I've got a smaller tree over here, I've got a building over here, another building over here. I think this building is going to have little impact on that, so I'm not going to model it. There's, there's one right here. So what I want to do is uh, model these different um, obstructions. The easiest way to do this is, again, these are all shading objects. So if I uh, use the rectangle and, whoops, wrong, wrong tool, this rectangle tool, and I can just approximate that and use push-pull to get approximately the right height. I'd say this is probably about 20 feet tall. I'd say this is about 20 feet tall. And this one I think is about a four-story building. So I see it's also not uh, the same alignment. So I'm going to rotate this and I'm going to put this up about 50 feet. And then this building over here, I'm going to also do, I'm, I'm actually not sure offhand, but I think this is about a 50 foot building as well. Um, now this building is way off in the distance. I don't think that's going to impact this at all. Uh, and now I can look at trees. So I've got one tree actually pretty well aligned there. Um, and for trees, I'm going to use... Um, a uh, also a shading uh, object and the the method I'd like to use to simplify this is just a rectangle that's the approximate diameter of the tree so actually this one's in pretty good shape if I press S I can uh, not only scale this uniformly and proportionally I can also do it disproportionately so I can just kind of align the that the diameter and get the, the a good tree canopy there um, and then I'm going to copy this over to this side and do the same thing for this. This is a much larger tree and um, looks like about the right height, maybe a little taller. Oops. And now this, uh, this tree may not... Um, well, it looks like this tree probably will impact a little bit. And then there's, there's uh, some other ones over here. I'm going to copy that over to there and then rotate this so that it blocks it appropriately. So that's um, a, a real basic method for getting trees and obstructions in. Now I, I do want to make sure that these are all in uh, shaded, their shaded geometry. And in fact, there's a lot of these faces I don't need. It just will um, add to the runtime. So I'm going to delete all the faces I don't need from these shading objects, including the tops, the back sides. All I really want are the, the front sides like that. Um, and I'm going to delete these guys too. Uh, maybe this one as well. So it just adds to the to the runtime for um, the run, actually. No, I'm going to just take this whole thing out. I don't think I need it. Okay, and then I want to make sure that all this is on the um, a shade layer. So I'm going to, again, press Control X and make a, a shade object, and then Enter, and then press Edit, Paste in Place. Um, I think these guys were already shade geometry. So I'm going to make sure to explode them so they then turn into uh, shades just like everything else. Yeah. And again, the, don't worry about the whether it's the correct side or not. Um, finally, notice again these PVs that are floating above here. I'm just going to uh, tuck them in next to the building or on top of the building here. And we're going to talk about these more in a few weeks. Make sure that they don't intersect with the building geometry, but that they're above the building geometry and kind of out of the way. We'll come back to them. Please do not erase them. And actually, this is a good time 
I'm going to save this again. 03 context.idf. This is a good time to point out the um, that these are building information objects. The way to check is to go here to your info tool and you can hover over any of these and you'll get some information. So this says it's shading, building, detailed, um, and it gives you all the different faces. Uh, this is building surface detailed and it says it's a wall, um, it's in zone one, and it even gives it a name. These guys you'll notice have names. They're, this is PV3, this is PV2, and this is PV01. And that's the reason that it's very important you don't erase them. Um, if you, for instance, want to know later uh, that these are trees, uh, you can rename them. And so actually what I want to do is save this file and then I'm going to clear it and then open it again. And it takes a little bit longer to draw these objects to import them. But now they're all separate objects. It, it separates all the different shading uh, objects. And we can actually go and customize the name. So if I show the object info window, can see this opens by default at type building and I can change this to site and then I'll know later that these are site objects and are trees. Um, so this is the easiest way to signal to yourself for later that those are trees um, in case you want to set a transparency to them for the leaves.